are you? We're Children's BBC and we're here to have fun. Then that's the thing for us. For a world of children's entertainment, there is no better. All the Children's BBC stars are waiting to entertain you. There's Fireman Sam. Right, do sir. Pingu. <laughs> the Teletubbies. <laughs> Postman Pat. Oh, I know what that means. Williams Wish Wellingtons. <laughs> Noddy. Thank you. Spider. Okie doke. So, can I help in any way? And the Dino Babies. It's really fun. What's going on? I'm telling the people about how all of you can be found on a series of fantastic videos. Are you sure? Of course I am. But video is not the only way to catch you. There are also great audio cassettes, fun-filled books that will entertain and educate, plus activity-packed CD-ROMs that provide hours of fun with puzzles, games and a chance for you to meet your favourite characters. I'd love to have them. Children's BBC. A world of fun. Postman Pat, Postman Pat, Postman Pat And his black and white cat Early in the morning Just as day is dawning He picks up all the post bags in his van Postman Pat, Postman Pat, Postman Pat And his black and white cat All the birds are singing And the day is just beginning Pat feels he's a really happy man Everybody knows his bright red van All his friends will smile as he waves to greet them Maybe you can never be sure There'll be knock, ring, letters through your door <laughs> Postman Pat, Postman Pat Postman Pat and his black and white cat All the birds are singing And the day is just beginning Pat feels he's a really happy man Pat feels he's a really happy man Pat feels he's a really happy man It was a lovely morning in Greendale the flowers were blooming in Pat's garden. And so were the weeds. Pat was up early. Hmm, the garden needs a going over. I could do a spot of weeding before I go to work. Pat arrives at the garden shed. I'll need a spade. He soon found what he wanted. Here we are. Just the job. This'll help get rid of these blooming weeds. There was plenty to choose from. Just look at that time. Pat's going to be late with the post. You best leave those weeds now. Time's getting on. It's nearly quarter past. Hang on. I'll be there in a minute. I'll just shift this. Hmm. Out you come. Mm. Ouch! Oh dear! Help! Sarah was busy and didn't hear Pat come back. Ooh! Ouch! Oh, my back! Ooh! Are you all right, Pat? 
Ooh. Oh, dearie me, what's happened to you? Ooh. Oh, 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 it's my back. Oh, it doesn't half hurt. I was just pulling this grass. Here, let me straighten you up. Ow! Ow! Oh, oh stop, it's worse like that. Oh, I think I'd better call the doctor. I can't leave you standing Ouch. there all day, propped up on the table. Bless me. That's just the person I need. Dr Gilbertson happened to be passing. Hello, Doctor. Oh, what a piece of luck seeing you. Poor old Pat's hurt his back. Can you come in and have a look at him? Of course I can. Poor Pat. Now then, Pat, what have you been up to? Oh, hello, Doctor. Only a bit of weeding. Ooh, ow! It's my back. Let's have a look now. Does it hurt when I press here? Ow! Ooh! Sorry about that. Yes, you've pulled more than grass. You've pulled a muscle. That's what you've done. And you'll need to rest it. A day in bed, and you'll be as right as rain. A day in bed? That's right. And I'll send round some lotion to help ease the oh, pain. Oh, dear. Bye for now. Cheerio, Doctor. Bye, and thank you. What about the post? I can't just stay in bed with all the letters and parcels waiting to be delivered. I know. You can take the letters. Oh, me? You're joking. Well, I, I suppose I could. I did work for the post office once, and I can drive. Give old Sid a ring in Pencaster. I'm sure he'll be able to fix it. There's nobody could do it better than you. You know the way round as well as I do. Well, I will. It'll make a nice change going out with the post. I'll give them a buzz right now. Oh, hello, Sid. Yes, yes, it's Sarah. I'm calling to see if I can replace Pat today. Oh, I can't stay here all day. He's got a bad back. That's fine. <laughs> yes, you too. Bye. There we are. That's all fixed up. Now, I wonder if Pat's hat will fit me. Oh, postwoman Sarah. <laughs> what a laugh. I'm off, Pat. Sid gave the OK. Have a nice rest. Bye. Uh, bye, Sarah. Jess wondered what was going on. He went back inside to see if Pat was still there. Mrs. Goggins was busy at the post office. Here comes Pat. Morning, Mrs. Goggins. Morning, pa Hello. Oh, it's Sarah. Where's Pat? He's hurt his back and has to stay in bed. I'm taking the post today. It's all arranged with Pencaster. Oh, that's all right then. I'm sorry to hear about Pat. There's not much post today. It's all in this bag. It'll be a bit of a change. For you, I mean. I hope it all goes well. Oh, I'm sure it will. Do you mind asking Dorothy Thompson for her carrot cake recipe? It's not something I could ask of Pat. Of course, don't worry. Cheerio! Sarah's next stop was at the village church. Hello? Anybody there? Morning, Reverend. Bless me. What's happened to your voice, Pat? Oh, it isn't Pat. Sarah, <laughs> what a surprise. And a parcel. Lovely. But where is Pat? Laid up with a bad back for the day. 
Oh, the poor boy. I'll pop in and give him a game of chess. That'll take his mind off it. Thanks, Reverend. Cheerio. Goodbye, Sarah. Early in the morning, just as day is dawning, she takes her ball and goes back in her bag. <laughs> Sarah was on her way. At Thompson Ground, Dorothy Thompson was very busy in the kitchen. That sounds like Pat. Now I wonder if he's forgotten. It'll make a nice surprise. Morning, Pat. I just thought you... Oh, it's Sarah. Yes, Pat's in bed with a bad back. So I'm doing the post today. Pat, with a bad back? Today of all days? Oh, what's so special about today? Uh, today? Oh, uh, nothing. It's, um, well, you know, I, I just thought, um, oh dear. Oh, I nearly forgot. Mrs. Goggins asks if she can have you a carrot cake recipe. What? Parrot cake? Um, uh, I'm not sure. Just now. You see, uh, but I can see you want to be on your way, uh, and all that. Uh, what with all those letters to deliver, <laughs> I'm not old you up. Good luck. Cheerio. Oh, yes. Well, uh, I'll be off then. Goodbye. What's she in such a hurry for? Folks are acting a bit peculiar. I wonder if they're always like this. I must ask Pat. Sarah was on her way. <laughs> it was the last call for the day at George Lancaster's place. He'll be looking forward to getting his Farmer's Weekly. But there was no sign of him. Anybody at home? Well, hello, Sarah. What a surprise. Hello, George. Here's your magazine. Pat's at home, in bed with a bad back. Um, you're early with the post. I mean, you mustn't be too quick, must you? Do you fancy a sandwich? No, thanks. I'm fine. I must be going. Well, um, how about a look at my prize ends, then? <laughs> now, isn't this one a beauty? You can hold her if you like. No, thanks, George. I, I really must be on my way. Nay, nay. You'll not go without a cup of tea, will you? I must see how Pat's getting on. Bye. You, you could take Pat some eggs. Bye, George. What a strange day it had been. She was hoping that Pat would be up and about. Hello, Jess. Have you been taking good care of Pat? Hello, Pat. I'm home. There was no answer. It's me, Sarah. There was still no reply. Dark. Happy anniversary! Anniversary! And I thought Pat had forgotten. Remember? 
Oh, we all wanted you to have a special party as a big surprise. Have an anniversary cake. <laughs> I can tell you I had a shock when I saw you coming with the post. Well, I did smell baking, but you didn't give me time to ask about it. And here's one parcel that arrived late. Happy wedding anniversary. Oh, lovely. Oh, but I nearly forgot. How's your back? The ointment I gave him and the day's rest did wonders. Here's to Pat and Sarah. Postman Pat, Postman Pat, Postman Pat and his black and white cat. All the birds are singing, and the day is just beginning. Pat feels he's a really happy man. Pat feels he's a really happy man. Pat feels he's a really happy man. Postman Pat, Postman Pat, Postman Pat, and his black and white cat. Early in the morning, just as day is dawning, he picks up all the post bags in his van. Postman Pat, Postman Pat, Postman Pat, and his black and white cat. All the birds are singing, and the day is just beginning. Pat feels he's a really happy man Everybody knows his bright red van All his friends will smile as he waves to greet them Maybe you can never be sure there'll be knock Ring letters through your door <laughs> Postman Pat, Postman Pat Postman Pat and his black and white cat All the birds are singing And the day is just beginning Pat feels he's a really happy man Pat feels he's a really happy man Pat feels he's a really happy man <sighs> Thanks, Doctor. I'd better be on my way now with the post. There seems to be more and more these days. Now, don't you be overdoing it. <sighs> Just take it steady. You'll be fine if you'll only relax a bit more. Now, this should put you to rights. A few vitamins and a tonic to liven you up. That'll be grand. Thanks again. Cheerio. Bye, Pat. <laughs> What with being so tired and going to see the doctor, Pat was late. Oh dear. There's no sign of him. Just look at the time. Where has Pat got to? <sighs> Morning. Morning, Mrs. Goggins. Oh dear. I'm so sleepy. Sorry I'm late. I popped in to see Dr. Gilbertson. Oh, I just feel so... Ooh, so sleepy. Ooh. Oh, Pat, I'm sorry to see you like this. What with all the posts to be delivered? If only they could send somebody from Pencaster to give a hand. A day or two, even. But it seems there's nobody to take your place. <laughs> Pat, wake up, Pat. Best be getting on. Uh, what? <sighs> oh, oh, yes. Yes, I, I'd better be on my way. Bye. Bye, Pat. It must be nice being a cat. Snoozing all day in a nice, warm, comfy van.
Pat was slowly on his way. Greendale itself seemed sleepy today. But not in Ted Glenn's workshop. Something was clicking and whirring and beeping all day. Hello? What was happening? Ted! Morning, Pat. Sorry, can't stop. Morning, Ted. Whatever are you up to with all these boxes? Come and have a look at this. My new computer. Can you pass a pile of that paper? What? This? Whoops! It's all joined together. That's right. It keeps all the pages together. You bung it in this printer, and off we go. This looks complicated. What does it do? Nay, Pat, it's a drawing for a new invention. You can do it at a rate of knots on the computer. Not like pencil and paper. <laughs> it even keeps going while I'm asleep. Sounds all right to me. Do you think it could deliver letters while I'm asleep? A robot. That's what you need, Pat. Look at this book. It tells you how to make them. Computer controlled. No job too difficult, it says. A robot postman? <laughs> I could do with one of those. It might be possible. Design it on the computer. Take a day or two, mind. Then I could have a day off. You could have a week off. Mrs. Goggins would just have to feed it with all the letters and parcels. Let me show you. I'll print out one of my designs on the new printer. Ooh, what's this? Little men walking about. Robots. How are you going to print this lot out? I think the printer doesn't know how to use your new paper, Ted. Uh, now then, uh, don't worry, I I'll just... Uh, no, no, now, which idiot press to stop it? Uh, I think I'd better get out of the way. Uh, is, it, is it this one? No, mm, this one? Mm, maybe not. I'll pop in when you've got it sorted out. This. Bye, Ted. No, it doesn't like that. Uh, ooh, hey, oh, one of these... I suppose I could always pull the plug. <laughs> Ted must have sorted himself out. Because a few days after that, Mrs. Goggins heard a sound in the post office, and when she went to see what it was... Oh! Gracious me! What is it? Shoo! One step nearer and you get this in your sprockets! Get back, you beastie! It's all right, Mrs. Goggins. Sorry it gave you a fright. You see, it's the new robot postman out for its test run to help give Pat a rest. Just try it with some of the post. Well, I don't know about that. Trusting the mail to such a contraption. There's no need to worry. It's all worked out by computer. Can't go wrong. Look. I'll show you. <laughs> show what you can do, Mr. Robot. <laughs> Oi! Look out! Hmm, just what I supposed. I've heard about these computers. Um, just needs a slight adjustment. Um, Let's see, uh, should this be up or down? I'll leave you to your contraption, Ted, if you don't mind. There's work to be done. <laughs> hey, up, look out, it's off. The beast has pinched the horse out. Stop him, Ted. Oh, dear. No, I don't know how that's happened. Oh, dear. 
Sorry, dearie me. Don't you fret, Mrs Goggins. I'm after him. Bye. <laughs> Bye, Ted. Pat had finished the first lot of post and was coming back for more. Have you seen a robot go by, Pat? It's gone off with the rest of the post. Is that what it was? Look, it's left a trail of letters. All we have to do is follow. Mrs. Goggins is none too pleased. I bet she isn't. Hey, up your robots found somebody. Good heavens! What is this creature? Oh, the dear thing's giving me something. Letters? But, but they are not for me. Oh, Pat and Ted, am I glad to see you. A tin monster rushed up to me and thrust these letters into my hand. And not one of them is for me. Did you see which way he went, off, Reverend? Get him off! Get him off! Shoo! Go oh, away! Crumbs. Oh, good heavens, what is it? Oh, please! The Martians have landed! What's going on? Just switch you off. Hey, give over. It's not for me, you idiot. Come back. Oh dear, it's not programmed to come back. George, see who that is, will you? My heck, it's stomach on wheels. Oh, and it's given me a letter. Duff kettle. That's you, dear. We'll never catch it at the rate it's going. What we need is transport. Come on. This is where we keep the post bus. Quick, hop in. Oh, there's Pat in the post bus. Glenn. I hope they don't take that tin machine with them. There'll be rust and lost screws everywhere. I can't see it, Ted. Hang on. What's this? Whatever's happened to your van, Sam? Am I glad to see you both. Real frightening it was. This... this UFO from outer space. It came belting down the road. Couldn't help it, but I had to go straight into this field to dodge it. Which way did it go? It looked as if it was heading for Thompson Ground. Do you think I should call P.C. Selby? <laughs> I don't think he'd believe you. Let's take a shortcut across the field. We might be able to cut it off before it gets there. Don't forget, I'm in the back. Way up. Hang on. Ah, whoa! Be steady on. They arrived at Thompson Round the back way. <laughs> Quick, Pat, before it does any damage. Dorothy wondered why the chickens were making such a noise. Then this thing waving its arms came along. Oh, cheeky devil! Sorry about the washing, Dorothy. Is that elf shirt it's wearing? It's got my apron as well. <laughs> Who's this driving through the farmyard? It's a muddy field. Won't go far. Is that the shirt it's wearing? I'll tell you later. He's slowing down. Must have mud up to its chin. 
<laughs> He's stuck. Can't move. Right. I better go and fetch it. Well, it was a nice try, Ted. Thanks. Nay, leave it for now. It makes a grand scarecrow. I've been having no end of bother with the crows, and, and look, it scared them off. As for the robot, he seemed quite happy where he was, keeping the crows away from our field. Postman Pat, Postman Pat, Postman Pat and his black and white cat. All the birds are singing and the day is just beginning. Pat feels he's a really happy man. Pat feels he's a really happy man. Pat feels he's a really happy man. Postman Pat, Postman Pat, Postman Pat and his black and white cat Early in the morning, just as day is dawning He picks up all the post bags in his van Postman Pat, Postman Pat, Postman Pat and his black and white cat All the birds are singing and the day is just beginning Pat feels he's a really happy man Everybody knows his bright red van All his friends will smile as he waves to greet them Maybe you can never be sure there'll be knock Ring letters through your door <laughs> Postman Pat, Postman Pat, Postman Pat and his black and white cat All the birds are singing and the day is just beginning Pat feels he's a really happy man Pat feels he's a really happy man Pat feels he's a really happy man It was time for the post to be on its way in Greendale. Time to get a move on, Jess. This old van, thought Pat. Wasn't it about time he had something a little more up to date? Before leaving the village, he stopped at the vicarage. Oh, dear me. What a rush! Oh, good! There's Pat! Hello, Pat. I'm so glad you're in good time. Morning, Reverend. Dear me, what a rush! What's the hurry? Oh, do come in. I'm sure you can help. It's all to do with Mr. Pringle and the Major. Always at the last minute. Bless us all. It's this film show they're giving. All about... Now, uh, what did the Major say? Something about flying, I believe. It says in this paper that there's to be a surprise arrival. I'd love to see that. Oh, do come. Uh, tea? Um, yes, please. Bring Sarah and Julian. Bring as many people as you can. Day after tomorrow. Thing is, there's not much time to tell people. Oh, don't worry. I'll tell everybody. I see most folks on my rounds. That's kind, Pat. And if you could give them a leaflet as well. Miss Hubbard's running them off on that machine of hers. She's my next call. I'll pick up a good pile of leaflets, don't you worry. Thanks for the tea. Bye. Bye, Pat. Pat couldn't help wondering what the surprise arrival was to be. Would the Major be dressing up? Maybe he'd come in a new car. And would Miss Hubbard know about these things? Oh, 
Here we are. I hope Miss Hubbard's got the leaflets ready. Anyone at home? Morning, Pat. Oh, you're just in time. Hello, Miss Hubbard. Uh, anything the matter? The copier stopped right in the middle of printing these leaflets for... The Major's film show. Oh, so you know. Well, there's not a minute to lose. It's all in a rush. But I'm sure you'll find the fault in no time. Hmm, I don't know. Um, let's try and move a few things and see what happens. Have you tried these buttons? Of course. I suppose this piece it just slides... Oops! Oh, it's come off. Oh, Pat, do take care. I wonder what's hiding in here. Whatever it is, it's come undone. It's amazing what you can find on these machines. Little doors that... Hey, up, something's just dropped out. Oh, it's made a right mess. The floor! Oh, what's all that black powder? Oh, dear, oh, dear. It's a bit mucky, isn't it? You wouldn't think there'd be so much in it. Just a minute. Uh, hold that. Uh, Pat, I I'm rather worried. Lots of bits to go back. There's got to be something in here. There you are. A piece of paper jamming the works. Now, where did this come from? <laughs> Sounds a bit rough, doesn't it? Well, it seems to be working. I'm sure it'll settle down. Hmm, it is rather smudgy and a little lopsided, do you think? Never mind. They'll make out the most important bits. Um, I'll tell them about the parts they can't read. Uh, best be on my way. Cheerio! But, Pat, what about the mess? Oh, well, I never. Jess thought Pat needed a wash. Perhaps a cat lick would do. <laughs> but then, maybe not. The smell of burnt paper put him off. Thompson Brown, next stop. Hello, Pat. Morning, Pat. Morning, everyone. A mucky one, if you ask me. I wish you'd told us you were sweeping chimneys in your spare time. <laughs> We've got a couple that need doing. Oh, don't you listen to him, Pat. But we've got plenty of hot water, if you'd like a wash. Uh, no thanks, Dorothy. There's no time. What with all this post to deliver, and these leaflets about the Major's film show to give out, uh, I hope you'll come. Oh, yes, we'll come all right. <laughs> so long as we don't get mucky faces like yours, Pat. <laughs> Nay, there's no chance of that. Bye. Bye, Pat. Cheerio. <laughs> Pat was on his way. Ted Glenn was sorting out some wood when Pat arrived. Hello, Pat. Hello, Ted. What's all this about, then? A film show? Me, I've always been interested in flying. I'll definitely be there. But what have you been up to, Pat? <laughs> Mending that old van of yours again? Oh, it's a long story, Ted. And I haven't got time to stop. Anyway, I'll see you at the film show. Bye. Right you are then, Pat. Cheers. Great. The, the day of the film show came. Uh, Children, down at the front, please. Spool when does it start? Will they be selling ice cream? 
Come I and knew sit it. down. It's dropped. Oh, I knew the Major would be late. Good. Here's Pat. I'm sure he can help. Have you seen the Major, Pat? Missing, is he, Reverend? Did I tell you about the surprise? Surprise, Reverend? I think you did mention it. Yes, the Major promised there would be a surprise. But, oh dear, he's late. Tell you what, I'll pop up to Garner Hall and see if he needs a hand with anything. Won't be long. There was scaffolding all up one side, but no sign of the Major. Hmm, but he's not in. Help! Ahoy! What's that? You down there! I'm hearing voices. Pat! Can't you hear me, man? Hello! I chose the man's death. Where are you? Pat! Who's that on the roof? It was Major Forbes waving from the basket of a hot air balloon. It's me, you noodle. Do pay attention, Pat. My jolly old anchor rope has got mixed up with the chimneys, what? Be a good fellow. Climb up and see if you can cast me off. You, you want me to go up there? Uh, ooh, I'm not very good on roofs. I get dizzy. Why do I always get these jobs? I wish Ted Glenn was here. He's good at climbing onto roofs. What are you doing up here, Major? In that basket thing? There's no time for idle chat, man. Catch hold of that rope. I don't believe I'm doing this. It's wrapped itself round the chimney stack. Steady on. It's not easy on these tiles. Whoops! Let me get this untangled. Now, uh, which way does it go? Come along, Pat. I'm trying my best. Shake a leg, I'm late as it is. Hey, up. Where are you going? Don't leave yet. Come back. I want to get off. I'll be with you in a jiffy. But I'm out here, and I don't like it. Now that we're moving, must see all shipshape. Help! I want to get off. Ooh. Where's my van? Sorry, Pat. Can't stop. Just hang on for dear life. Ooh, it's a long way down there. Help! Pull me up. Stop fussing, man, and get in. Heave ho! Put me down. I want to get off. Ooh. You're all right now. Safe and sound. Where has the Major got to? I can't see anyone. Can you... Oops! Oh, I'm sorry. It's all this looking up at the sky. It's making me quite dizzy. The sky is where the surprise is coming from, Reverend. But I can't see what that has to do with Major Forbes. Look, what's that? Where? Where? Oh, look. That big thing in the sky. It's coming this way. It, it's, it's a big balloon. balloon. There's the church. And the post office. Hey up, Major. There's a tree coming up fast. I'll give her a blast. Up she goes. Well, I never. Pat and the Major in a hot air balloon. What a surprise indeed. The Major and Pat dropping from the skies. There's the Major. And Pat! Wow, what a lark! Yippee! This is great! Yeah, yeah. super fast! I would yeah. never have Hooray. done it without yeah. Pat. It was those stupid chimneys of mine. Got caught, what? I would never have guessed, Major, that you were an expert on hot air balloons. Now come and tell us some more. 
one and all. Nice to see so many of you here today. I thought it might be of interest if I told you of my adventures traveling by hot air balloon in different places around the world. Thank you, Mr. Pringle. I was stationed at the time on the west coast of Africa, and my first trip started just outside the town of Binji. I remember just missing the rooftops by inches. Postman Pat, Postman Pat, Postman Pat and his black and white cat. All the birds are singing and the day is just beginning. Pat feels he's a really happy man. Pat feels he's a really happy man. Pat feels he's a really happy man. Postman Pat, Postman Pat, Postman Pat, and his black and white cat. Early in the morning, just as day is dawning, he picks up all the post bags in his van. Postman Pat, Postman Pat, Postman Pat, and his black and white cat. All the birds are singing, and the day is just beginning. Pat feels he's a really happy man Everybody knows his bright red van All his friends will smile as he waves to greet them Maybe you can never be sure there'll be knock Ring letters through your door <laughs> Postman Pat, Postman Pat, Postman Pat and his black and white cat. All the birds are singing and the day is just beginning. Pat feels he's a really happy man. Pat feels he's a really happy man. Pat feels he's a really happy man. It was a warm morning in Greendale, and there were plenty of letters and parcels for Pat to deliver. Whoops! Oh, sorry. Whatever are you doing with my bike, Pat? I... I just didn't see it. Goodness me, Pat. I hope you'll take more care. It's taken a bit of a knock. Sorry, Miss Hubbard. It's all this post to deliver. I didn't see your bike. There's just too much rushing about. Mm, the bike looks all right. I'll pop round when I have a minute. Goodness me, Pat. I hope you'll take more care. I'd better get a move on. Cheerio. Just the thing for the twins' nasty cold. Not like the stuff we had in the old days when I was a girl. Morning, Doctor. Hello, Pat. Well, I never. Express delivery. Sorry. Can't stop. Bye. Hello and goodbye then, Pat. Pat was soon out in his van, delivering the day's post to the countryside, trying not to hurry. First stop, Ted Glenn's workshop. Who's that tooting? Now then, Pat, what's up? Sorry, Ted, can't stop. In a rush today. Bye! Well, I'll be flummoxed. What's old Pat rushing off like that for? Just when I fancied a good natter. But Pat had no time to stop and natter. There was post to deliver. First, some letters for Greendale Farm. Mrs. Pottage heard him pull up outside. Morning! Morning, Pat. You're just in time for a cup of tea. Very kind of you. Just half a cup, please. You're not telling me there's so much post that you can't stop for a chat. That reminds me. I'll have to find time to call on Miss Hubbard. 
I ran into her bike this morning. Rushing about. Well, that's what Miss Hubbard said. Hey, is that the right time? I'll have to get a move on. There's a lot to do today. Thanks for the tea. Bye, Mrs. Pottage. Bye, Pat. Outside, Jess wasn't looking too happy. Hey, up, Jess. What's happened? Oh, my sandwiches. Who's done that? They've eaten the whole lot, rotten things. The sandwich robbers of Greendale strike again. It can't be the hens this time. This is a case for PC Selby. But no time to stop for clues. No sandwiches. And miles away from home. The next stop was at Thompson Ground. Morning, Dorothy. A letter for you today. Hello, Pat. Thanks. Any news? <laughs> There's news, all right. I bent Miss Hubbard's bike a bit in the village, and someone's nicked my lunch while I was parked at Greendale Farm. Oh, dear. I'm sorry to hear that. I wonder who could have pinched your sandwiches. But never mind. I've something nice in the oven. There's plenty to spare, so don't you worry. I'm just off to the garden first. Then we'll see what we can do. Just come and look at my carrots. The real champions. Oh, my. Oh, heavens. Oh, it's awful. It's all dug up. Massacrated. What's happened? All the carrots gone. Some just nibbled. Others half chewed. I don't believe it. Who could have done a thing like this? The garden's ruined. Just look at my lovely carrots. What monster has done this? First my sandwiches, now your carrots. <laughs> it must be a very hungry monster. I'm going to ring PC Selby. He'll know what to do. It might be somewhat dangerous. Somewhat... Somewhat big and dreadful. Come out of... I don't know where. Poor old Pat. Dorothy was in such a fluster that she has forgotten all about lunch. Pat and Jess went on their way feeling more and more hungry. And keeping a lookout for the monster. There was something going on at Granny Dryden's cottage. All the washing had been thrown into the road. What's all this? Oh, Pat, look at me washing. The line's broken and me new sheets are all dirty in the road. And me best pillowcase is gone. I don't know what's happening, but there's been trouble all up the dale. Someone nicked my lunch and all the carrots out of Dorothy Thompson's garden. And now you're washing. It's some beast from the moors, you mark my word. Bye, Granny Dryden. Jess was wishing that the beast was a nice fat mouse. He was hungry. And so was Pat. And what's this? I'd recognise that bike anywhere. It's Miss Hubbard's. Oh, Pat. How glad I am to see you. What is it, Miss Hubbard? Have you had an accident? I was on my way home when this thing with hooves and, and an enormous head covered with a white sort of bag came out of the field. It snorted at me and I fell off. It looks as though you've met the beast. That's what I called it. 
Then it pinched the apples from my basket, so I took a swipe at it with my brolly and jumped the wall. I'll tell PC Selby as soon as I get to the village, so don't worry. Will you be all right now? Oh, yes, I'll be fine. Mind how you go, Pat. Cheerio. Do be careful, Pat. There was a registered letter for the Major. Morning, Pat. He was busy in the garden. Morning, Major. A registered letter for you. Look at this, Pat. My best begonia shattered. And I know who did it. A huge monster it was, rampaging all round the gardens, with a mysterious white shroud over its head. I must say it has made a mess. I do hear it's the famous beast of Greendale, risen from its lair in the moors. Bah! I'll give it beast of Greendale, making a mess of my gardens. We'll have to hunt the thing down. Get help from the village. Chase it back to... to... from wherever it came from. Hang on. Listen. Bells? At this time of the day? I can't think why. Unless... By Jove! The beast is after the Reverend, and he's calling for help. Come along, Pat. Not a minute to lose. I just hope we're not too late. Whatever is going on? The noise! Morning, Reverend. Glad to see you fit and well. Oh, hello, Major Forbes. And Pat, I am glad you've come. We thought it was you ringing the bell. No, I, I'm not ringing the bell. I mean, how can I be? The bell rope's inside, and I'm out here, oh dear. Right, men. We'd better investigate. Lead the way, Major. Uh, well, I, I think you should go first, Pat. I'll bring up the rear. Off you go, chap. You're next. But why me? Well, it's your church after all. Are you coming with me, Major? Well, no. Bad strategy, you know. I'll stay here and secure your line of retreat, what? Off you go, there's a good chap. Nothing to worry about. I don't like this. All he needs to do is to take the bull by the horns. What? Horns? Did you say horns? Ah? Hello? I think we've found the beast of Greendale. Quick, run! <laughs> Just say, do be careful, Major. Well, I never fancy finding him here. Here, give over, little devil. I can hardly hear myself think with that bell you've got entangled with. Ouch! That was my foot. Morning, all. Well, I never. What is he doing? Oh, Dad, you've caught her at last. Yes, well, uh, it's a pity it took me so long. Who knows what she's been up to, apart from getting entangled in this bell rope and making a racket. And we all thought it was the Beast of Greendale. Beast of what? <laughs> oh dear me, it's no beast. It's only Lucy's pony. I'll make up for any damage she's done. <laughs> I think you'll have a few gardens to dig and put to rights. We'll all help. 
beast of Greendale. Ah, humbug. Bless her. Bye-bye, and thanks, everybody. Yes, bye, everyone. Well, <laughs> I'd rather ride in my van. For one thing, it doesn't be carrots. Postman Pat, Postman Pat, Postman Pat and his black and white cat. All the birds are singing and the day is just beginning. Pat feels he's a really happy man. Pat feels he's a really happy man. Pat feels he's a really happy man.